live a life that is worthy of emulation. Live a life that can attract somebody. Do you desire to be fruitful? The qualification for fruitfulness is that you must abide in him. It's his abode. Satan. When men shall say that is a casting down, you will announce that there is a lifting up. Somebody help me tell your neighbor, say it is not about what you can see. It's not about what you can see. Anybody can see anything. It is not about what you can see. It's about what God is saying concerning me. It's about the assignment God has given me for 2019. It's not about what you feel. Neither is it about what you are saying. It's not about your conception or your conclusion. It's about what God is saying concerning me. Oh, but I feel an unusual oil here. I feel the grace of God right about this service. I feel the oil of God in this place. But I see the sick becoming healed. I see the all loose. So I see the oil of God flowing in somebody's direction. Oh, help me. I feel God in this place. You may see anything, but I feel the oil of God. But I feel the hand of God right about me. But I see God saying, Oh, the time has come. The season. Turn your Bibles. Turn your Bibles very quickly with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ba, 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 ba. I don't know what you had before you came. Oh, but the oil is becoming thicker and harder. I don't know what you heard. Oh, but I feel God. Yeah. You are the miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Very quickly, let's go. We started a journey. We started a journey. Who can still remember? First Samuel chapter what? Are you still there? Oh yeah, very quickly. We started a journey there. Brother, it is not about what you can see. If they ask anybody this year, who is to be blessed? They may not see you to be one. They may not see me to be one. They may look at us and say we are not qualified. If they ask them who will be the first to touch the greatness that 2019 has to offer, you may not be in the number. I may not be in the number, but I have a good for you. It is not about what they see. Neither is it about what they think. But it is about what my God is saying. First Samuel chapter 16. If you're there, say I am. Verse number 7. If you forget everything, don't forget this one. Verse number 7. 
I'm jumping because of time because I have dwelt here for two Sundays now. I want to see if I can conclude it today so that we can go into other things. I made a promise to you that this year I want to jump into another series that I call eschatology. And uh, by the time I'm through with eschatology, uh, some of us will understand what the church represents and what the coming of Jesus is all about. There I will explain the Armageddon war. I will explain the new heaven and the old heaven. There I will tell you about the three heavens that do exist and I will show you in the Bible. And that is a series I want to quickly jump into. So I want to do everything today to conclude with this one. So verse number 7 of 1 Samuel chapter 16 Ladies and gentlemen man. It is not about what a man can see. Neither is it about what a man thinks about me. Anybody can think anything. Anybody can say anything. But your life is not dependent upon the views of man. Neither is it dependent upon what anybody say concerning you. Your life is about what God is saying. My life is not determined by the season. Uh, neither is it determined by the weather uh, neither is it determined by how much money I have uh, nor how many friends that I have uh, my life is determined uh, by where God is sending me uh, I have a feeling in 2019 uh, that there is somebody under the influence of my voice uh, you are packaged, programmed uh, you are designed by God uh, oh, to launch you out this year but I want to talk to my generation this year uh, but I want to speak the word of God this year oh, but I want to speak to this generation I want to speak to my people this year there is somebody here you are packaged by God designed by God for something special where you are now does not matter God is coming there to get you look at somebody say God is coming there to get you very quickly verse 7 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse number 7 But the Lord said to Samuel My translation started with but in verse 7 The Lord said to Samuel Matata Yagada Before verse 7 there was verse 6 Without verse 6 there will not be verse 7 but because of the existence of verse 6, verse 7 showed up. You know the story from how we started that God sent the prophet Samuel to the land and God said, I have chosen a king for myself. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason you cannot stop me is that I didn't choose myself. Somebody chose me. The reason this generation cannot quench the fire that I carry is that this fire is not orchestrated by me. This fire is ignited by God. And nobody can stand on the way of God. You can only try, but you are committing suicide. Now hear this. In verse 7, but Matatayala, but anytime God shows up this way, destiny is about to speak. Anytime God talks like this, destiny is about to spring up. Ladies and gentlemen, God said to Samuel, I need you to go to the house of Jesse. I have chosen a king for myself. I have selected a king for myself. Go to the house of Jesse. Call Jesse and his sons and I will show you the one to anoint for me. We already concluded here that you need the oil this year to proceed. I wish I had time to talk about the oil and talk about how the oil comes upon a man. Oh, but in the course of this meeting, if I do have the time, I will 
will say it to you but he had this and some left and when he got to the house of Jesse when he got to where God sent him when he got to the place of his assignment oh I'm feeling a push in me here how oh, somebody is getting better now the days of sorrows and pains are over oh, the days of difficulties are over I don't know what refused to work before but after this encounter it will begin to work I don't know whom I'm talking to but I speak from the oil but I speak from the grace I said it will work after now can somebody raise voice and shout him a light on that ladies and gentlemen when Samuel got there to cut the long story short something happened in the seas uh, the bible said in the seas uh, that Samuel saw a man uh, he saw a son of Jesse uh, whose name was Eliab uh, and he looked at him uh, in the seas uh, and he said surely the Lord's anointed is before him uh, he said surely uh, it must be Eliab uh, he must be the one he look like it he must be the one he look like the one to be anointed he starts to look like the one God is gonna choose everything about him looks like he's the one oh that should be anointed as he was about to anoint Eliab I saw the seven but the Lord said as he was about to anoint him as he was about to anoint him I saw verse 7, which is where I'm going to concentrate on today. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not. Tell your neighbor, say do not. The Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance. Or at his physical stature. Because I have refused him. Do not look at his stature. Do not look at his appearance. I have refused him. For the Lord does not look nor see as a man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Ladies and gentlemen, when I saw the seas, Samuel already lifted the jar of oil. Already lifted the horn of oil. And said the Lord's anointed is here. Eliab you are about to be anointed. To be the one to do the will of God. By becoming a king unto your people. Ladies and gentlemen shall I say this to you. Oh, before this time. Oh, there was a king in the land. The, the, the king was in existence. But God said I don't want Saul. I have chosen a king. But the king that God chose was a son of Jesse but Jesse was not a king Jesse was not powerful that is to say I may come from anywhere and be the champion where I come from does not matter who my father is does not matter who your father is does not matter where you are today does not matter what matters is that God has chosen me Stand up and walk up to three persons prophetically. Say, God, I've chosen me. You can't stop me. God, I've chosen me. You can't stop me. God, I've chosen me. Walk up to three persons prophetically. 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 Say it prophetically. Say, God, I've chosen me. God, I've chosen me. Ah, God, I've chosen me.
you remember, Samuel had been anointed all his life. That is to say, no matter how anointed you are, you can be God. Remember that Samuel did not get involved into spiritual things in his old age. As old as he is, all his life has been on the altar. Remember it was Samuel that the mother offered unto the Lord. Come on now. Unto the Lord as a child. And the Samuel is not new in the voice of God. Neither is he new in the things of God. It was this Samuel. It was this Samuel that was lying on the altar when God called him Samuel Samuel. That is to say in the annals of heaven, in the historical book of heaven, his name is written boldly. we we'll talk some things. Now hear me. As, as powerful as Samuel is. As anointed as Samuel is. This was the same Samuel who came to learn from Eli. But ended up teaching Eli. I will explain. Every word I said to you, I will explain. I said he came to learn from Eli. The mother brought him to Eli. And this is somewhere that cannot be born without a prophetic declaration from the mouth of Eli. It was the prophetic declaration from the mouth of Eli that brought about the existence of Samuel in the first place. Because when the mother was crying up to heaven and the mother was saying, God give me a son and I will give you a priest. There is no way God will answer the prayer because God God is not an author of confusion. God had declared to Eli. God has said to Eli, you and your sons shall be priests before me forever. So that office had been committed into the hands and family of Eli. So for you to be a priest, you had to be an offspring of Eli. Oh, now, a woman showed up and said to God, God change the rule. God said, no, I have committed to thee to Eli. And except Eli gives it out. Because with the heart a man believes unto righteousness. But with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Until he comes out from the mouth of Eli. Nobody gets it because I am God. Once has he spoken. Now and the woman began to cry unto the Lord and said to God, I want to strike a deal with you. Oh, give me a son and I will give you a priest. I am having a push here. I feel like preaching right about now. Oh, but God will help me. I want to explain something to you. Oh, but follow me as I go. And hear these. As this woman began to cry and began to pray, Eli looked at her and said, Woman, oh, why are you drunk? The woman said, I am not drunk, but I will not tell you what I'm praying. If the woman had told Eli what her prayer is, Eli may not have spoken prophetically. Because what she was asking for was to take away the seal of priesthood out of the family of Eli. Eli didn't know. And the woman didn't tell him. The woman said to Eli, as it is in my heart, have I poured out unto the Lord. And Eli unknowingly declared prophetically, let it be unto you as you have asked when Eli said let it be unto you as you have asked that was when Eli handed over the priestly office can I talk to you some more that was when Eli handed over the priestly office to the woman. And the woman gave birth to her son. And after giving birth to her son, he took the boy Samuel. And he came to Eli and said to Eli, excuse me, sir. The other day I was praying. I didn't tell you what I was praying for, but this is the boy I was praying for. And I struck a deal with God. I told God I will bring him back to him so that all the days of his life he will serve him. He, she didn't tell Eli lie even at this point uh, that he will be a priest uh, she said he will serve the lord all the days of his life so take him and eli took him as a little boy but didn't know he was taking a priest and a standing priest 
and the boy came in as soon as Samuel walked in the heaven above Eli closed up there was no communication between Eli and God anymore no communication between the sons of Eli and God anymore because two champions cannot rise at the same time that is why I speak in the city of Abba every prophet hold on when I'm done I want to talk about Samuel a little before I go on. This is the same Samuel that was brought to Eli as a boy. And he was serving under Eli. Learning the ways of God. Learning the prophetic ways. And how it operates. Ladies and gentlemen. He, he humbled himself. He was serving under Eli. Oh, but he was in the book of God. This is the same Samuel. The same Samuel that God was patient enough to call. God called him the first time. He ran to Eli and said, Master, you are calling me. Eli said, No, I didn't call you. Go back and sleep. He went back to sleep, but God will not sleep. Because we serve a God who does not slumber nor sleep. He went back to sleep, but God did not sleep. Right at the middle of his sleep, God called him another time. And God said, Samuel, Samuel. He stood up and ran to Eli. He kept running to Eli until he done on Eli by experience. Eli didn't hear from God, but by experience. Eli said, I think since this thing is persisting, it must be the Lord that is calling you. If he call again, brother, say to him, Lord, speak for your servant hear it. Why must God do that? As long as Samuel was serving under Eli, Samuel was a servant of Eli and God cannot break ranks. It has to come from the lips of Eli to make Samuel a servant of God. So it was Eli that told Samuel, you are now free to say to God that you are his servant so he can communicate with you. It has to leave the mouth of Eli. Now hear this. When God called him the first time and he was running away, God saw him running to Eli. God could have as well said, come back, come back. It is me, the Lord, that is talking. Come on now. But God didn't do that. Why? It has to come from the lips of Eli. That is why. If you are here, let me release you before you go. Or you will run far. Every spiritual journey has a procedure. That's a procedure. So, Eli had to say to him, If he called you again, Say to him, Speak, Lord. For your servant hearing. For your servant is hearing. And immediately he said that. God said okay. But before then Eli said something to him. Before Eli gave him the direction. Eli said to him. You will swear to me. That whatever God tells you. You will let me know. Because if I tell you what I'm about to tell you by experience. This thing is going to connect you direct to God. And when it connects you direct to God. You will have no need of me. connect you direct to God and when he connects you direct to God you will not need to ask me for anything anymore but promise me that whatever God tells you you will relate to me because from the look of things God have changed his mind and nobody can question God he does whatever pleases him can I say this to you it was at that point that Samuel started his journey the same Samuel who started his journey with God as a child gathered all of the experiences Samuel has seen God kill he has seen God make alive he was there when one day the two sons of Eli died he was also there when Eli fell on his back and died Samuel had gathered experiences and one day he turned around and discovered he was the only priest standing but yet he's been through a lot Oh, oh, but God sent him and yet he made mistake he looked at Eliab 
and said you must be the one that God chose. God said no. God said I do not look at the outward appearance. Neither do I look to at physical stature. I don't know who you are hearing the sound of my voice today. I come as a messenger of God. I come with the horn of oil. I come filled and anointed. I come with power and grace. I come to anoint you so that in 2019 you will excel. You will not go down. Your outward appearance may not show it. But God said to tell you that you are on top only. You are not going down next year. If your heaven is the loudest as a confirmation for blessing. God said to somewhere, do not look at the outward appearance. Can you help me tell somebody? Say, don't look at me from what you can see. Anybody can look at you today and conclude anything. But their conclusion is not God's conclusion. You didn't hear me. I said their conclusion is not God's conclusion. What they are saying is not what God is saying. Their thinking is not the thinking of God. Before the end of the first quarter of this year, somebody here will stand upon the ladder of success. Raise your voice and shout your amen like thunder. Raise your voice, shout your amen like thunder. Raise your voice, shout your amen like thunder. He said to Samuel, don't look at the physical stature. All of those will deceive you. And my Bible said that Jesse began to show his sons one after another till he was true according to his calculation. And Samuel said to him, are all these your sons? Is there no other that is remaining? He said, it's remaining a little one. One thing I like about God is like he chooses the little things. He chooses the neglected ones. He chooses those who the world do not recognize. Who the world do not count as anything. I don't know who you are. Hearing the sound of my voice right now they may have concluded uh, that you are too small for the crown uh, you are too small for the blessing uh, you are too small for the glory uh, but their conclusion is not God's conclusion uh, their word is not God's word uh, they may have concluded you are not good enough uh, for the level that God is preparing to take you uh, they may have concluded that you are not good enough uh, for the lifting that is coming this year uh, but I have a good news for you in the eyes of a man you may not be qualified but in the eyes of God you are the choice of divinity and because you are the choice of divinity there is nothing anybody can do about it when he said it must be earlier God said no can I say this to you it was somewhere that was holding the oil but it was God that is the anointing mm, come on now the anointing that is to come upon him to reign is coming from God who is holding the oil does not matter it was somewhere that was holding the horn of oil but it was God God that is the anointing in the anointing that makes the anointing the anointing that makes the anointed the anointed of God my brother hold on I got work to do now for the anointing to be effective it has to come from the source of the anointing that is why the prophetic name and the name with which Jesus fulfilled his ministry was the Messiah and the meaning of the word Messiah is the anointed one. Is the anointed one. Because anytime you are anointed, you can change anything. There are many of you in this place. Before the end of the first quarter of this year, you will change your family story. That amen is not looking like it. That amen is not looking like it. 
before the end of the first quarter of this year before the end of the first quarter of this year you will change something in your history you will change something in your story before the end of the first quarter of this year somebody stand up and holler your amen in a different way Shout your amen like your neighbor is not shouting. I feel God in this place. Before the end of the first quarter of the year, the story of your family won't be the same. Anybody who asks you where your God is before, we come and beg you to direct them to where you are. Ah, let your amen signify you are the one I'm talking to. Let your amen single you out from the crowd. I'm speaking by the authority of heaven. Come on now. Before the end of the first quarter of the year, your God will prove to them that you are his choice. I say he will prove to them that you are his choice. Ah, he will prove to them you are his choice. Ladies and gentlemen, where I am now does not matter. Where you are now does not matter. God will come there looking for you. Can I hear a better amen here? Can I hear a better amen here? God will come there looking for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will come there looking for you. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I said God will come there looking for you. In the miraculous name of Jesus Christ. Where you are now does not matter. You may be hiding at the back. But right where you are hiding. When destiny is out for you. It will locate you there. Ladies and gentlemen. When God sends somewhere. The very one that God chose was in the bush. He was not in the house. I have a question for you. Is there anything that is hidden from God? If nothing is hidden from God, how come God sent him to the house of Jesse, but yet the man that is to be anointed was not in the house of Jesse? Should I remind you that God knew you where he was? The day God wants to lift you, he will lift you where your enemies will see it. If God had anointed him in the bush, nobody will know he was anointed. God decided to anoint him outside. We are even those who hate him will see him. Those who love him will see him. In 2019, I prophesy the blessing of God that will come on you will speak volumes. It will speak volumes. It cannot be hidden. It cannot be hidden. I shall say it and men will confirm it. Can you raise your voice and holler amen? Can I say next to you? When God wants to lift you, He will leave a mark on the sound of time. I will explain. He will leave a mark on the sound of time. God said, Go to the house of Jesse. He didn't say, Ask Jesse to bring his son. He said, Ask Jesse to come with his sons. He wanted every one of them to show up. And they were coming according to their ages. Can I tell you the reason? The reason is that nobody will think that you are chosen because you are the only one they met. But God saw everyone and decided to choose you. Mm, can I push it further? God saw everyone and decided to choose you. But now hear me. Nobody will say it was you, are, you were lucky. 
Why wouldn't they say you were lucky? They would say you were lucky because every one of them also showed up. And the truth of the matter is that they did not just show up. They all showed up before you. And God wanted to leave something historical. The Bible said when all the other sons of Jesse had come and passed. And Samuel said God did not confirm that it is any of them. God said, Samuel said, is there any remaining? And Jesse said, yes, one little one. But the problem is that his location is not around here. He's in the bush. He's attending to animals. I have given him an assignment. His assignment is to take care of my flocks. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. What you see me doing today does not matter. You may have given me assignment, but God has an assignment for me. And what matters is not your own assignment. It is the divine assignment for my destiny. What matters is not what you say about me. It is about what God is saying concerning me. You have given me assignment. Oh, that placed me in the bush. But God has assignment for me. That will remove me from the bush and put me on the throne. him an assignment that kept him in the bush but God has an assignment for him that will take him to the throne so what happened Samuel says send for him I'm about to conclude hit your neighbor say send for him touch one neighbor say send for him until you send for him I'm not concluding touch your neighbor say send for him you are does not matter when God wants to reach you he will reach you ladies and gentlemen his brothers were at home he was inside the bush but Samuel said send for him there is somebody here 2019 is sending for you for the blessing Send him for you for the promotion. Send him for you for the lifting. Send him for you for the promotion. One more time. One more time. One more time. I don't care what you do now. 2019 is sending for you for unusual promotion. For unusual lifting. For unusual promotion. In the name of Jesus Christ. 2019. He's sending for you. For the promotion. He's sending for you. For the lifting. He's sending for you. Samuel said send for him. Help me hit your neighbor. Say they are calling me. You're feeling like your neighbor is intimidating you. Slap your neighbor, say they are calling me. Matata Yagada. Somewhere says something that touched me. Ladies and gentlemen, among the sons of Jesse, this one is a small one. Eh? The small one in the house. A whole somewhere. The only seer in his time said to the father of this chosen one, he said, me, Samuel, I will not sit down. You, his father, you will not sit down until Mata Bragazakotea, until the chosen one arrive here none of us is permitted to sit down. Why? They were giving him standing ovation. Because when God lifts you, the generation around you will lift you. Nobody will have a choice but to lift you. The worst thing that can happen to anybody is trying to put down whom God have lifted. Anytime you try to pull down whom God have lifted, he will use you as a ladder for his climbing. You didn't hear me. 
he will use you as a ladder for his climbing she will use you as a ladder for her climbing the only thing you can do is when god lift a man celebrate the man when god lift a woman celebrate the woman so that you too can be lifted Samuel said, I will not sit down. Jesse, you will not sit down until he arrives. 2019 will not sit down. Nobody around you will sit down until the oil will come on your head. I see something in 2019. That's why I'm shouting. I feel it here. I see something in 2019, you know, and that is why I am hollering, you know. Oh, my generation, hear me. Oh, talking to do, I have come again, you know. I see the oil coming from above. I see this year yielding it to somebody, yeah. but I see the blessing coming about us. I see the oil coming on our heads. I see the blessing coming about us. There is nothing anybody can do about it. Samuel said, I will not sit down. Jesse, you will not sit down. All your sons you brought out here, nobody will sit down. It is not about who senior who. All his elder brothers were forced to stand waiting for his arrival because the time you come does not matter. You can still come late and be the latest. Somebody feel like crying. Why another feel like laughing? And that's what life is all about. You didn't hear me? Let me say this to you. Don't you ever pray that when God lifts you, everybody will rejoice with you. It's not possible. At your lifting, many will rejoice. At your lifting, many will cry. Sir, did you hear me? At your lifting, many will rejoice. At your lifting, many will cry. What matters is not about who cried or who laughed. If God decides to lift you, he will lift you. Did you hear that one? If you hear, say, I hear. Hear me now. Samuel said, I will not sit down. You, Jesse, you will not sit down. All your sons will not sit down. Everybody that got in this place nobody will sit down we are all going to wait until he arrives from where from the bush can i tell you the implication the implication is that they didn't call him on phone on the phone there was no phone no gsm at that time so they didn't call him on the phone he was in the bush the person who we go to call him will leave them there and then walk into the bush and remember that in the bush there is no particular address where they will locate him in the bush because what he's taking care of is animals in the bush so where he was yesterday is not where he will be today because if he take them to a particular place yesterday they will eat there after eating there he doesn't need to come back there again tomorrow he will shift to another place so that is to say they will get to the bush and they will look for him Eh? you didn't hear that one they will get to the bush they will look for him but Samuel said we shall be standing somebody will leave us here walk out of the town and enter the bush locate him wherever he is give him the information that people are waiting for him at home and now remember that after they give him the information that he is needed at home he may not leave immediately because he will need to gather the flocks together that is to say when God is about to bless you he will give you time he will wait for you he will be patient with you God is not in a hurry to walk away 2019 everything around you will wait until you are blessed he said send somebody to call him they went to the bush they called mr david david came out from the bush and he came out from the bush he didn't get home to go and take his bath 
Neither did he get home to go and change. He was wearing the clothes that he wore right inside the bush when the oil come on him. That is to say, what designs you is not on the outside. What designs you is on the inside. What makes a man is not what is on the outside. What makes a man is on the inside of a man. Shall I remind you that in 2019, what will come on you, what God will release in your life, what God will release over your head, it will surpass everything that the wicked had done. It will surpass everything that the enemy had done. And the blessings of God will rest over your head. It will rest over your life. It will rest over your family. If you can stand up and shout amen three times, that's confirmation. This year, somebody in this place, I see your name written boldly. God is going to bless you beyond cost. Bless you beyond your former limitations. If your amen is the loudest, mark it, the blessing is coming. If your amen is the loudest, mark it, the blessing is coming. If your amen is the loudest, mark it, the blessing is coming. Father, for confirming your words. Send for him. They sent for him. Child of God! I hear destiny calling you. This is 2019. It is your time for celebration. It is your season to be lifted. It is your time to be on top. It is your time, it is your time, it is your time. Raise your voice and shout amen three times. One, two. Ladies and gentlemen, anything may happen to a man in verse six. But wait for verse seven, God will react. In verse six, they nearly choose the wrong person. But thank God for verse seven. And seven is a number of perfection. The number seven of every man's life is about to show up now. And that is my prayer in one minute. The number seven that makes you the champion is what will show up from this moment. God will suspend every protocol. God will suspend all the forces. God will suspend all the powers. He will give you the miracle that will put smiles on your face. Raise your voice. Shout again one more time. Raise your voice. Shout again one more time. Raise your voice. Shout again one more time. Do you know that there is a blessing and there are blessings? In 2019, the blessing that will come upon your family is such that you have never seen before. Listen to me. Let me say it to you. The father of David was not a king. Jesse was not a king. His grandfather was not a king. I release it by prophecy. In 2019, God will give you an office that nobody occupied in your lineage. Hey, hey, hey. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. God will bless you somewhere where nobody in your family ever got to. God will bless you somewhere where nobody in your family ever got to. That's where God will bless you this year.
Is there anybody that brought you to this church? Who is the person? Eh? Talk. Your auntie. What's her name? Eh? Mrs. Cordelia Ahochog. Is she in church? Somebody hala says send for him. You are not talking like you ain't talking to do family. Say send for him. Mama, are you the one that brought him? Are you a member of this church? You're a member of this church? Okay. So I can talk to you. Can I talk to you? I saw a list where they wrote names. His father's name was on top of it. His name was the second. And I saw three other names. But I have an interest. In that list, the father's own was already covered with black. His own is marked with red. To be covered with black because as soon as the person dies, they will cover it with black. So your father must be dead for them to cover it with black. Talk to my, me. My father is already dead. He died on the 7th. He died on the 7th. On the 8th, sorry. On the 8th. On the 8th, yes. on the 8th. On the 8th of this January. Yes, sir. Now, he has been covered with black. He's in the mortuary. Yes, sir. He's in the mortuary as we speak now. Yes, sir. Now, they have sealed yours with red. Which in the realm of the spirit signifies danger. The reason I was looking for who brought you is that it has to go beyond what ordinary eyes can see. And I don't know if you know enough to know that the man you are standing with, I'm the one carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of talk. I, do. I carry capacity given to me by God to challenge both the spiritual and the spirited. Now the mix was made and the reason for all of this battle is because of a house. Because of a house. Because of a house. Yes, sir. This man is claiming to be the owner of the house. Yes, sir. While your father is actually the owner. Yes, sir. Your father of his goodwill gave him two rooms yes, sir. in the house. Yes, sir. Now it has become a problem to you. Yes, sir. He has killed your father. He is not hiding it. Yes, sir. He's saying he will kill the rest. Yes, sir. And he's doing it as he has written the list. But the first thing I will do for you but you are not talking to me. I don't know if you know the man before whom you are standing. I'm talking to you sir. My brother, I carry the prophetic mandate of the God of talking I do. Yes, sir. This is 2019. I don't joke this year. Yes, sir. If I call your matter up this year, be careful. If you joke this year, I will leave you. Because I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. I come with fire and thunder in my mouth. I said to you this year, I will not spare the wicked, or neither will I spare the enemy. I come in the volume of the Lord. I come in the name of the Lord God. I come in the name of the Lord God of us. Those words are said in the name of the foundation of the the ones that is spoken, the voice of my redeem, that all power they belong unto him. All power they belong unto him. I want to surprise them now. Okay, sir. Go ahead and fix your father's burial. Okay, sir. The man is making a boast. And that is the first thing I want to correct. He said, your father will not be buried in the compound. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Fix your father's burial. Okay, sir. If you cannot come, send her to come. Okay, sir. I think this is supposed to be one of us. 
send her to come. Fix the date for your father's burial. Okay, sir. Do everything. Your father is a good Catholic church member. Yes, sir. So go to Catholic church people. Let them fix a date for the burial. When they fix the dates, let me know the dates. Okay, Who is he that say a thing? And they come to pass when the Lord has not spoken. One thing I will do for you for coming here today is that this is your name that is sealed with red. I will remove the seal. Amen. Amen. I will change your name with his own. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout talk on that do. Oh yeah, go. When you fix the date of the burial, let me know. I will finish the rest. <laughs> Oh, good, you're good, you're good, you're good.